Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa from This Pilgrim Life, and I'm gonna be talking to you all about cooking with cast iron. Now, if you are not new here, you know that I love Instant Pots. Um, in fact, I wrote a cookbook all about Instant Pots and um, family recipes for your Instant Pot. But um, you may not know that I also really love cast iron pans. I did not grow up knowing how to use cast iron pans. Um, it used to be something where I just let my husband do everything when we were camping because it just seemed really daunting and like I just did not know how to cook with them and uh, more specifically how to clean them. So maybe that's you. So I'm hoping that today I can answer a lot of your questions and give you some ideas on how to use your cast iron pans and how to care for them every day. You can also find on my blog um, a post all about cast iron pans including an infographic and free printable um, with 15 things that you need to know about cooking with cast iron. Um, and then also, 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 um, this, is, this video and this post is kicking off Share the Love Month. I'm going to be spending the whole month talking about things that I love um, and then sharing the love and doing giveaways. So go ahead and go over to the blog after you watch this video and make sure that you enter to win your own cast iron pan. Um, I've got a little helper here with me. He's going to be helping me show you guys how to make some eggs in your cast iron. So don't forget to go and enter the giveaway um, because you could win your own cast iron. Um, if you're looking for a recommendation of a pan to use, then definitely check out Lodge. And like I said, I'll include some links down below, um, as well as a bunch of other links that are just be some helpful info, recipes, things that I'm making. Um, and then if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, I'm going to be spending the rest of the month talking about things that I love and doing a lot of giveaways. So you don't want to miss that. And then I'm also doing a series right now on healthy, um, healthy resolutions that you can make in your kitchen. So, um, both of those things are going on right now. So I don't want you to miss anything. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button. If you want to see when I put out new videos and let's just jump right in. So guys so that was the basics of cooking with cast iron and now I'm gonna get into some more specific recipes and things that you can do with your cast iron pans okay so the first thing that you want to do whenever you're making eggs is to preheat your pan so I've been heating my pan about over medium heat. You can feel the heat if you just hold your hand right above the pan. And then I like to, yep, everybody feels the heat. And then I like to just use butter to grease my pan. So it should of course melt quickly because your pan is gonna be nice and hot. 
Now don't leave your butter there for too long because you don't want it to burn. So I'm just gonna immediately crack my egg. Now, because your pan is already hot, mm -hmm. this process does not take very long at all. I like to leave my eggs like this for um, maybe about a minute and a half and then flip them over and let them cook for about 30 more seconds and then they're done. This is also a good time to season your eggs. So we like to season it with just a little bit of kosher salt and fresh ground pepper. Now, if you're really fancy like my husband, you might try to flip the eggs with uh, the pan, but I like to just be safe and use a spatula. Okay, now at this point, you really don't need to leave your eggs on for very long at all. You're really just trying to finish cooking up the whites on the other side. We like our yolks to be runny. So pay attention because they will overcook quickly. Perfectly fried eggs with a nice runny yolk. And my pan is still nice and clean. Okay, for scrambled eggs, it's also important to start with a hot pan. But scrambled eggs can be really finicky and it's really important to not stir them for a few minutes and let them start to cook. If you stir them too early, that's when your eggs can start to stick. Okay, so I like to liberally grease with butter, pour my eggs in, and then leave them alone and don't stir them for at least a few minutes. And again, this is a good time to just go ahead and season your eggs. Not pepper. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay, so if you don't stir it too soon, then you get eggs that are perfectly cooked and a pan that is going to be nice and clean as soon as they're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and then just let them finish cooking for about 30 more seconds. Okay, perfectly cooked scrambled eggs. Okay, so clearly my pan is pretty much clean. I'm gonna use this beautiful pot holder that my son made me because the handle is hot. And I'm just going to rinse it under hot water. With cast iron, it's important to avoid rapid temperature changes. So when you have a hot pan, you don't want to go run it under cold water. So make sure you use hot water. And I'm just gonna wipe it down because all this is gonna come off really easily. So I'm gonna wipe it down with a paper towel and then apply a thin layer of cooking oil. Most of the time your pan shouldn't look like this after cooking. As long as your finish is okay and you're not cooking on too high of a heat, your eggs shouldn't stick so bad um, or your other food shouldn't stick so bad. However, there's gonna be times when either you let your pan get too hot or you are distracted and you get food that's stuck like this. So I'm gonna show you how to um, clean your pan when you have food that is stuck so um, stuck so much. So I'm just going to pour in a little bit of water, just enough to cover, and I'm going to bring that water up to a simmer. <clears throat> okay, so once your pan and your water are hot, you can use um, a spatula or something just to kind of scrape up some of those pieces that got stuck. And you'll see it comes off a lot more easily once you are once your pan is hot. So, um, of course, you know, do this right after you cook if you can, um, but sometimes that's not really feasible. So I'm not going to be able to get everything off with this spatula, but I try to get, you know, most things. And then I will take you to the sink and show you how I'm going to get the rest of the pan 
clean. This is also good to do if you don't want all of these pieces of egg and stuff in your sink, clogging up your sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw away all these big chunks and then finish cleaning the pan in my sink. And see here, I don't have anything coming off when I wipe my pan, and that's a good thing. I mean, there's a little bit of um, um, color coming, but there's no like black flakes or anything, and that means that this pan is very well seasoned. Now, I'm just going to use um, a little dollop of flaxseed oil, and when I say little, I mean little. You really don't want to put too much oil on your pan. So all you're looking for is just to be able to have a thin coat of oil. Just like that. Nothing pooled up or anything um, because if you have it greased too much, then that can lead to sticky spots. Okay, so this pan is now ready to be put away either in my cabinet or if I'm gonna use it to cook with, which I am gonna use it tonight. Making London broil is really easy and really budget friendly. So the first thing that you wanna do is just get an inexpensive bottle of red wine. Then you're gonna take the London broil and just stab it a whole lot of times with a fork. This is just gonna help it to be more tender. Transfer the London broil to a bag and pour in about a cup to two cups of red wine to let it marinate. And you wanna put it in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, but up to about 12 hours. After your London broil has marinated for a while, you can take it out. You're gonna discard the rest of the marinade and season it liberally with salt and pepper. While you're seasoning your London broil, is a good time to go ahead and let your cast iron griddle be preheating on the stove. And for this, I really like to heat it up to about medium high because you want a really good sear. I like to grease the griddle with a little bit of ghee and then go ahead and add the London broil. And I'm gonna let it cook for about six minutes on the first side and then flip it over and cook it for between six to 10 minutes on the second side. And you're just looking for an internal temperature of about 125 degrees. And dinner is served. So we had London broiled that night, mashed potatoes out of the Instant Pot, and just simple roasted Brussels sprouts, and of course, mushrooms for our steak. Pancakes are another great way to use a cast iron griddle. I love it because I can make several pancakes at once. On this particular morning, I was using my recipe for back pocket pancakes and we added blueberries. So we had blueberry pancakes for breakfast and it was very, very delicious. So normal pancake rules apply. You wanna heat your griddle to about medium heat and just wait until you see bubbles on tops of the pancakes and then you can flip them over for another couple of minutes before transferring them to a plate to keep warm. All right guys, I hope that you found this video helpful. There's really a lot that I could have shared with you about cooking with cast iron. So if you do have any other questions, anything that I didn't cover, go ahead and ask me down below. Head over to the blog as well because I'm gonna have all of this in written form. There's also a free printable reference sheet for 15 things you need to know about cooking with cast iron. 
um, on the blog as well. So if you have any other lingering questions, go ahead and head over there and you might find some things that I didn't mention in the video. Um, as well as don't forget to enter the giveaway because I want somebody to win a cast iron pan. I love these um, and they're really, really great. So make sure you um, enter to win. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love coming on here and hanging out with you and I will catch you guys later.